Hello, this is Charles McNamara, your virtual instructor. We're going to talk about seatbelt statistics, safety tips, and laws. First off, we'd like to start off with letting you know nearly 27 million Americans admit they don't wear a seatbelt when they drive. Motor vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death among Americans ages 1 to 54. You are 20 times more likely to be killed if you are ejected from a vehicle. 86% of passenger vehicle occupants who survived a fatal crash were wearing a seatbelt. So what does it say? Seatbelts help save lives. Click it or get a ticket. Airbags are not enough to protect you. In fact, the force of an airbag can seriously injure or even kill you if you're not buckled up. One of the safest choices drivers and passengers can make is to buckle up. Let's get the word out and let's just do it. I've compiled a list of some new and old seatbelt training videos. Let's watch them together and see what we can learn. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Jennifer Ryan with AAA, and today we'll talk about when your child is ready to move out of a booster seat and into a seat belt. Seat belts are designed for adults, so it is important that parents do a visual test to determine when a child can be safely moved from a booster seat into only a lap and shoulder belt. A few things you'll need to check for. First, does the child sit all the way back against the vehicle seat? Second. Do the child's knees bend comfortably at the edge of the vehicle seat? Third, does the belt cross the shoulder between the neck and the arm? And fourth, is the lap belt as low as possible, touching the thighs? If you answer no to any of these questions, the child needs to be in a booster seat to ride safely in the vehicle. It is also important to keep in mind that children are safest in the back seat until they reach age 13. Never let a child put the shoulder belt portion of the seat belt behind their back. This could allow for what is called jackknifes, which is when their torso bends too far, causing spinal injury. Or submarines, which is when the child slips out from under the seat belt. Always set a good example for your child and make sure you buckle up on every trip. If you have questions about the fit of your child in a seat belt, you may contact a certified child passenger safety technician or visit sites such as seatcheck.org or nitsa.gov for more information. There is no way to avoid a ticket if you don't use your seatbelt.
cops are stepping up enforcement and looking for unbuckled drivers like never before. If you don't buckle up, you will get stuck with a ticket. Click it. Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome back to another episode of Cops Court and Community. I'm Darnell Leeson. Now, before I get started, I want to say what's up to all of my subscribers, both old subscribers and new. I would not be here without you guys, so I thank you. And listen, if this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and come join this community. And of course, we will welcome you to the neighborhood. So, come November 1st, 2020, if you're 16 or older, you'll need to buckle up no matter where you sit inside of a vehicle in New York State. Whether you are the driver, a front seat passenger, or you're sitting here, here, or here, you need to have on your seatbelt. Now, Governor Andrew Cuomo signed legislation that now requires all passengers and motor vehicles over the age of 16 to wear a seatbelt. Now, the current law as written only requires seatbelts for passengers riding in the front, which is that seat here, um, next to the driver. That's the only time you're required to wear that seatbelt. Now, the change It's a habit for most of us to buckle up while we're driving. But what about when we ride in the rear seat of someone else's car or use Uber or Lyft? The Institute survey found that full-time belt use is lower in the rear seat. And that's especially true for people who primarily get around by taxi or ride hailing service. Less than 60% of people who said they frequently take taxis or use ride hailing services said they always wear their belt. People who reported buckling up less often were asked for their reasons. A quarter of respondents said they believe the rear seat is safer, so using a belt there is unnecessary. If you're not belted in the rear, you're putting yourself at risk, and you're also putting other people in the vehicle at risk. People belted in the front seat can be injured or killed by unbelted occupants in the rear flying forward in a crash. We recently conducted a test to show what can happen when there's a crash and the person in the back is unbuckled. In a simulated 35 mile per hour impact, the unbelted dummy slams into the back of the driver's seat, pushing the driver dummy into the deploying airbag and steering wheel. Drivers are twice as likely to be killed in crashes when the occupant behind them is unrestrained. All but one state requires adult front seat occupants to use safety belts, but rear seat passengers are covered by laws in only 29 states and DC. Only 20 have primary enforcement which means a police officer can stop the motorist for the seatbelt violation alone. Stronger laws would help, but technology could also boost belt use. Studies show that persistent belt reminders are effective at getting front seat occupants to buckle up. These systems are common for the front seat of new vehicles, but few vehicles sold in the US have belt reminder systems for the rear seat. Although safety belts are proven to save lives, more than half of the people who die in passenger vehicle crashes in the US are unbelted.
check out some great resources from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration by visiting their website at www.nhtsa.gov. That's it. We're done, folks. Let's get off on this exit here and continue to drive safe. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and stay up to date with some training information. Charles McNamara here. Hope you enjoyed this training video.